Hello S2 and welcome to your Outdoor Learning and Creativity Project lesson for today which is Monday 22nd of February and it's period 7. So today's learning intentions are for you to identify your own strengths and weakness in preparation for the project. Also to identify targets for yourself in the project and starting to map out how you'll develop and meet those particular targets. So our success criteria for today is understanding how to identify your own strengths and areas for improvement and then how to enhance and develop these strengths and identifying that as well before we start the project. The key words are understanding, it's about you developing that knowledge and also the idea of how you're developing what you identify as good practice within yourself, the strengths you have, but how you make that better. That's key. And it's also challenging as well. Um, but those are the areas we're going to be looking at today and for you to align yourself in terms of being successful through the period. So, what will you need for today's period? Well, you're going to need the standard pen or pencil and you're going to need paper, preferably blank paper if you have it, and your S to Outdoor Learning and Creativity booklet, which should be online, or if you've got a hard copy, which I don't think you will have, you should have it all online, but that's what it looks like um, for you to help you complete today's tasks. So to mix this up a wee bit, I'm very keen for you to kind of get an overview of how you become self-aware. And that is essentially what this is about, about looking at what you do and what your strengths are and what you can bring to a group context. What can you bring to the table and being aware of that? Lots of people don't actually know what their strengths are or certainly can't identify it within themselves. They can ask other people to do it, but in terms of identifying it within themselves, it's a bit more challenging, a bit more difficult. So click on this YouTube clip, which will just give you a kind of overview uh, or a start to how we become self-aware in terms of our strengths and our areas for improvement. Know yourself. In this video, we will learn to identify and express our strengths, interests and areas of improvement. We will also learn how we can use our strengths to contribute to the organization's goal. We often look at others around us and compare ourselves to them. Sometimes we feel that we are better than them, while at other times it seems that they are better than us. This is how we first begin to be self-aware. Self-awareness means paying attention to and identifying your own characteristics, feelings, reactions, habits, behaviors, strengths and weaknesses. It allows you to understand not just yourself, but also how other people perceive you. If you want to succeed in life, it's a good idea to ask yourself what you want to do and if you have the required skills to achieve your goal. To get started, Write down all your positive traits or the things you are good at. These are your strengths. For example, you could be excellent at making conversation with people you meet for the first time. You could be excellent at solving math problems. You could be creative. You are always willing to work hard and be dedicated in anything you do. Or you could be organized in your daily life. Now, write down your weaknesses. Weaknesses refer to the traits you lack or the ones you need to improve. These hold you back from achieving success, but they can be improved on if you want. Your weakness can be anything from professional to personal. For example, you may lack important computer skills, could be unorganized, find it difficult to make decisions, 
are shy around new people, are not punctual, or maybe you procrastinate, which means you leave important tasks for the last minute. Being aware of your strengths and weaknesses is especially important if you are looking at potential career options. Knowing what you are good at can help you decide which jobs are suitable for you. This makes sure that you will be very good at your job and will enjoy working too. For example, if you have the ability to convince other people, you will do well at a sales job. Your strengths and weaknesses are one of the most important things that interviewers like to check. This tells them if you would do well at a job or not. Let's look at a situation and see how two candidates, Ryan and Rita, describe their strengths and weaknesses during an interview for the position of customer service representative. First up is Ryan. When asked, what are your greatest strengths and weaknesses, he says, um, I don't have any weaknesses. Maybe I could be faster with my work. My strength is probably my ability to deal with people. I think I am quite easygoing and comfortable talking to new people. The problem with Ryan's answer is that he starts with a negative response. No one is perfect and to say that you do not have any weakness is something that others will not believe. He also uses vague words like maybe, probably, think, which show that he is unsure about himself. Now it's Rita's turn. When asked the same question, she confidently replies, I am not very comfortable working on PowerPoint, but I am trying to learn through an online course I have enrolled in. My strength is that I stay calm even in tense situations. This trait helps me deal with angry and upset customers and solve their problems without getting angry. Rita answered the question honestly and also explained what she was doing to overcome her weakness. Further, she mentioned a strength that was related to her job and how that would help her become a valuable employee for the company. Remember, the best way to handle this question in an interview is to focus on your strengths instead of focusing too much on your weaknesses. In an interview, always avoid mentioning personal weaknesses like you are lazy. Instead, focus on your professional weaknesses, but the ones that are non-critical to the job. You must also supplement your weakness with a solution to overcome it. For example, if you say that you are a bit disorganized, you can say that you have started to list all your tasks every day so you can complete them all on time. You can mention your strengths as being dedicated, reliable, good at solving problems, being patient, and so on. However, always make sure that you're being honest. Before appearing for an interview, always make sure to think about how your strengths have helped you in the past. Finally, remember there are many great things you can achieve if you knew your true potential and the things you are capable of doing. So go ahead, make your list of strengths and weaknesses. All the best. So from watching the clip, let's start thinking about you. Okay, let's put you at the center of this. So here's some questions. What are your greatest qualities? Don't ask anybody yet. Just think about it just now. What do you think? If you were up and asked, what do you think your greatest qualities are? What would you answer? I always like to think of it in terms of adjectives. The adjectives would describe the things that you're really good at. Then how do you know that? So if you've identified a strength as being a great communicator, how do you know that? Who or what has told you that that is where your strength is at? Is it because when you stood up in first year or second year and gave a presentation about something, it was commented on by the teacher or by your peers, then that's how you know. Have, how Or do you feel that is where your personal strength is at because you can identify it yourself? Then within that, what qualities would you like to improve upon yourself? So if it's a case of you need to listen to other ideas more because sometimes if you have a strength of being a great communicator you can talk a lot but then not necessarily listen to other people and other ideas particularly in a group setting and then how do you think you could enhance those qualities so just have a kind of think about that the examples on this on this powerpoint are just examples 
Okay, so strength one, communicator. Strength two, maybe a motivator of others. You're good at inspiring other people. Um, but again, it's not just about identifying, it's about how do we know it? It's about being that self-aware. And if we go back to what we saw in the clip, that should help us. And then what do we see as our limitations? Not necessarily always referred to as weaknesses. What's our limitations? Maybe need to listen more, as I said, or maybe not take a back seat as much. If you lack a bit of confidence, sometimes you can sit back and allow other people to dominate and then you get carried and then the job still gets done, but you've not contributed much. And it's not because you don't know stuff and it's not because you don't want to, but it's because maybe you lack the confidence that other people have in terms of communicating your ideas. So maybe you have great ideas, but the limitation may be communication. So there's there's balances to it and it can go round in a, it can go round in a circle sometimes as well. Okay, now that you've thought about it, we're going to get to our first task. So, on the paper, so the plain paper, turn it landscape. And what I would like you to do is to create a mind map that identifies your strengths. So, basically, in the middle of the paper, draw a circle and put your name in the middle. And then, from the bubble, kind of bring lines out from the bubble and start to put down adjectives that identify your strengths, right? Start looking at it, okay? Come up with as many as you possibly can. Once you've done that, take another piece of paper, so don't do it on the same piece of paper, do it on another piece of paper, turn it landscape, and this time, do the exact same bubble with your name, but this time where you think your limitations or your weaknesses are, and then draw from that point and write them down. And then once you've done that, look at them, okay? Um, and then ask yourself, how do you know that? How do you know that? How do you know those are your strengths and how do you know those are your, li your limitations? And that comes from experience, identifying the experiences you've had in your life so far that have told you this. Now that you have your mind map, when you go to your booklet, so your outdoor learning and creativity booklet, and turn to page seven, and it should have on top of it what is an SQE outcome, because we're all working towards our personal development award. And you'll see at the top, it says, what are your interpersonal strengths, forward slash qualities, limitations and feelings and basically what I want you to do is take your mind map that has your strengths and your mind map that has your weaknesses or your limitations and that there is your answer and use the adjectives or the words you've used in the in the mind map they probably will be adjectives to describe it and use those to help you form an answer, a paragraph, okay? And the more adjectives you put in there, then the more chance that you will have of answering that question successfully. When it talks about feelings, that's about how you identify it, how you know. So you can say that I'm a really good communicator, and I know that because, because if you are a good communicator and you're told that, then you feel good about it, and that aligns it to that. So take some time, write it down, and then put that into your booklet or type it up and then save it. Now with any project, we have to set goals. But in terms of this, in terms of your own personal development, we have to look at how we set goals within ourselves. How can we improve what we're good at and how can we overcome limitations? And these two pictures are really useful for that, particularly the one on the left, the smart one. The idea about your goals being specific, they have to be achievable, 
nothing that's way over stretched beyond thing that you can't do because if you can't achieve it in a particular time then it may you may feel that becomes a limitation or it enhances your limitation which we don't want so it has to be timely it has to be measurable so again it's going back to how do you know you will have done it okay and it all above anything else has to be realistic it has to be realistic and only you're the person that can do that. So think about what you've identified as your strengths and your limitations and then let's start thinking about how do we enhance those strengths and how could we, over time, overcome your limitations. It's not as easy as it, th as you, as it may think at first hand. You have to take real care and to think about how you can improve yourself. So for example, if you identify yourself as a good communicator, how can you get better? Well, a lot of people used to say when I was your age that I was quite a good communicator. Uh, and you would probably think that. However, when I used to listen to myself, not often, didn't do it a lot, but I do remember being recorded for radio, I would speak really quickly. And I thought, I have to slow down. Yes, I can talk really well and I can speak well and I can phrase things well, but I talk really quickly. And because of that, you can lose some of it. And so therefore I had to learn or to enhance that skill of communication was to slow down. And then not only slow down, but then look at emphasizing certain words to get my message across. Okay? And you can do exactly the same by looking at what you're good at, how can you then enhance it? because that's what we always strive to do. Let's be as the best that we can be. So the next table below the table you've just written your answer in, in your booklet, asks you about how you're going to make this better. Okay, how are you going to make your strengths, qualities, limitations, how you going to overcome them. And it asks you um, to identify personal targets for the development of these skills. Okay, and it's not just about writing one word down. This is about writing down as much information as you possibly can about that target. Okay, so if it is about, as I've said previously, improving your communication, then tell me how you think you're going to go about and do that. So you can use the example I've just given to help enhance and develop that, okay? If you just write one word answer, then it's not really answering that. So you're identifying the personal target and the development of these skills, but the key things about the development of it, how are you going to develop it? How are you going to overcome it? What are the things you're going to put in place? So yes, you can put improve communication or not take as much of a back seat, offer more ideas. How are you going to do that? And that's a challenge. That makes it a bit more tricky than it would be if you just identify the target. But it's the most important thing because that there is where the success lies. Once you've done that, you can then answer the next box on the page in your booklet. And that's it, S2. Well done. So, you should have that page completed, done fully. The two mind maps that you've done, keep them because they will be further evidence that we can put into your booklet when you come back to school. But very well done. And that is you done for today. Take care and speak to you soon. Bye-bye.